What's up, guys and girls and everybody else? What's up? It's Josh Lau here with the Card Guys, and today we're going to finish off what we started last time. We're going to finish up the State of the Warriors metagame matchup chart. We're going to discuss a little bit about RTN and how things are looking going into Pro Tour, and I'm going to show you a couple builds that I've been working on, and then we'll play a couple games uh, probably with Dorinthia today. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, at the beginning of streams, I do like to uh, give people a little bit of time to filter in. So, I'm going to, let me just adjust something. So I've, I've increased my microphone sensitivity, so, Theoretically, you guys should notice a difference today, but we'll see. All right, let's play the mailbag game. So this came in the mail today. This card has been, I'll give you a couple of hints from heavy hitters. It has been quite difficult to use but it is theoretically very powerful. Okay? Obviously, it's a warrior card. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see if you guys can, uh, can guess what this is. Uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, we'll just kind of let people filter in if you guys have any questions or stories from the weekend. Let's hear them. So, I guess I'll start with story time. <laughs> Ooh, those are very good guesses, and you guys have already got it. Jeez, that was fast. It is commanding performance. This card has been very, 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 very difficult to use. And it's really, really, really tough because uh, I, th I think you have to change your whole deck build to use it correctly. Kind of feels like Prayer Bolana. You really have to go all in with the deck to do well with it. All right, guys. You guys were too good. Too quick. All right. <clears throat> This is the deck I took to RTN this weekend. Can you guess which deck this is? I'll show you I'll show you a card. Let's see. Let's see. I'll show you a card. Let's see. What's a good card to show you guys? What's a good card to show you guys? Mm, a lot of these are pretty obvious. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, how about how about this card? Okay, this. All right. So, hold the line was in my week three RTN deck. Grains of Blood Spell was also in my week three RTN deck. <clears throat> All right, we'll just kind of let people filter in and guess on those. And then we'll start on our main topics. Dory, is it then? Oh. I did not take Dorinthia to... RTN this weekend. Good guess, though. Shift the Tide of Battle Foil is beautiful, too. Yes, I agree. A lot of the, uh, a 
lot of the uh, warrior cards look like that. These are not really gold. They're, sorry, these are not really yellow. These are gold. Goldish bronze. This is what I sleeve my Bolton deck in. So. <laughs> I think you guys can put two and two together, especially if you've been watching my uh, streams for the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know that I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Kasai. And that is correct. Good job, Nathan. I did take Olympia prized fighter to RTN. And I did well. I went 5 1 in Swiss and then uh, conceded the top eight match so my buddy could get an invite. Uh, I actually think I could have taken down the whole event with Olympia. Um, the path would have been Bravo, Azalea, and then Kasai. And I think Olympia would have been great in all. Uh, in all those matchups. Let's go through the uh the deck list that I actually used for that actually before we we get into the main topic here. Let's see. Uh Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to finish off this and then we'll go into some other stuff. Uh but here is the list that I took to RTN and it it did real well. Um it beat a wide variety of decks. It beat a Phi. It beat a KO. It beat a Dash. It beat a Victor. Like it, it, it had stable matchups against everything. The only loss I had was to Prism. What are you going to do against Prism, right? Um, so it's pretty standard. It's very similar to the list that uh, I've been streaming. Uh, utilizes the. Eight attack reactions here. Quite a few go-agains. Still running the double down package. I'm not exactly sure if this is good or bad. Uh, a better way to use gold might just be to have a lot of zero-cost stuff. And then being able to play them out on, on when you have a lot of gold. But the double down does help generate a lot of uh, value. Um, we got two copies of Money Where Your Mouth Is. Pair it with Nourishing is really nice. And we got, you know, pretty standard stuff all around here. The deck is running 25 blues, which I felt is, like, just correct. Um, in the sideboard, I went with uh, seven defensive cards. Um, three sync, three fate, and an immovable. I felt with, like, s such a high blue count, the immovable could really, really shut down um, decks like Azalea, Bravo, Domblade Dory, etc., one copy of a movable is actually a card that I've really, really liked to have. Um, I, I included a copy of this at Perth War 3, and this like won me two games because it just it just shut down the Azalea's tempo. Uh, and then term in terms of uh, poppers running a down and dirty and three fiddles fighting spirit, uh, and a remembrance to get them back basically. Um, these are more for uh, Dromai than for Prism. Uh, Prism, unfortunately, there's not too much you can do. Like, Poppers help. Uh, but if they're playing for more of a Totem style, it's very difficult for you to remove two to three permanents. So, yeah. Quite difficult. Um but yeah, I, I felt like this list is really, really, really solid. It actually does uh, does pretty well. Um, it's not super flashy. It's just really, really, really consistent. And, you know, he gets the job done. Uh, and he has enough speed that... Uh... Well... Let's let's get into that actually, since we're we're I was about to I was about to compare Olympia and Kasai. So those of you who were here last week, remember that we were filling out this, okay? So I talked about 
uh, Dorinthia, Bolton, and Kasai. I went through each of the matchups, so I discussed why I thought these 15, uh, sorry, 15, 14, 14 matchups were the relevant matchups and the rest were not very relevant. Um, if you see any of these heroes at Pro Tour 4, I wouldn't be surprised. If you see anything other than this, it's a little bit surprising, right? Um, so I talked about, well, so for Dorinthia, there's many builds, but I picked the strongest build for the four heroes. So for Dorinthia, I selected Dawnblade midrange. So this means a Dawnblade focus deck. It may have a Decimator Axe in the side, depending on the build, uh, but it's designed to get Dawnblade counters and, you know, protect them and, you know, snowball the game, that type of thing. Classic Dor Dory stuff. Uh, for Bolton, I selected the Switch Bolton style. So there's been a bunch of Bolton builds running around. Um, but the most stable one at a high level, I think, is still the original Switch build where you run Raiden into the Raiden matchups, which is most of them. And then you run the combo when you need to run the combo. Um, it basically, because you're playing two decks in one with a core of like 50 cards that are, uh, that have a commonality, um, you're able to adapt to a lot of situations. For Kasai, I selected the defensive mid-range build. So this is, most Kasai lists look very, very, very similar nowadays. Uh, but I do think these defensively leaning, defensive leaning Kasai decks generally does better. The reason being, the longer the game goes, the more copper gold you generate, as well as the more dynamo resets you get, and the more sync belows you play. You know, if you play three sync below, three fate for scenes, that's six value right there, right? And we went through the Kasai's matchups and how they're a little bit polarizing. All right. In the end, uh, to be frank, they're all pretty close. So uh, obviously there's a slight edge here for Dory, but Kasai is not far behind. And my, the end conclusion was that you play Dory if you want the strongest deck. You play Kasai if you want to roll with gem luck. And you play Bolton if you... If the metagame consolidates, Bolton actually becomes better because you can narrow down the sideboard slots. All right, let's take a look at chat here a little bit. Uh, I know you're not a fan of Kasai, but I really wish we could see you take a spit on her. Uh, there's a lot of Kasai content out there. I don't really know if you... Need me to do more Kasai content, but uh, if enough people want it, I will do it. <clears throat> what do you think about Hatchet Story? Three Swigs is more than two. Uh, I think people really underestimate Olympia's hero ability. Um, being able to generate gold tokens really does make a difference. I'd say it makes more of a difference than swinging three times. Because against good players, they're going to recognize you're going for a triple swing on Dory. And then they'll just block. So you don't actually get your hero ability. Um, the, in order to swing three times and have an attack reaction to ensure that something hits requires the perfect hand, which is you're asking for a lot. Uh, been busy since Liverpool. Happy Lunar New Year's. <laughs> Glad to see you're still here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the build that I selected for Olympia is the Hatchets build. This is the build. The, this is the. So Olympia can be built in many, many different ways. But in my opinion, the only competitive way to build Olympia is with the Hatchet of Body, Hatchet of Mind. And so let's talk about Olympia's matchups here. And they're going to look very similar to to Kasai's, but there's going to be a few key differences, and we're going to talk about them. So, Hatchet Olympia is very similar to the 
Saber Hot Streak with D Reacts Kasai. Except Hatchets has a little bit higher damage output. Uh, Olympia has Wager Cards, which allows him to kind of generate like a, a tempo throughout the game. Uh, and Olympia has much higher blue count, like radically higher. Um, you saw my list. I think it was running like, I think it was 31 reds, four yellows, 25 blues, something like that. So with all that added together, basically the differences between Kasai and Olympia are that like matchups like Dash, Phi, KO, these are going to be better for Kasai than Olympia because the hat, the Sabres and Hot Streak have relevant text because Dash is very attack bait, attack action based. Phi is very attack action based. KO, Bolton is also very attack action based. Uh, and Kasai is also going to do better into Victor as well. Um, Olympia will do better into decks that require a higher blue count. So like Kano and Vincent. Uh, Olympia will also do better in matchups where he has, they have to speed up, right? Kasai cannot really speed up her plan. Um, whereas, uh, Olympia can aggressively break gold tokens and really dig and churn through the deck very quickly. Um, so, so matchups like Max and Teklovasen, uh, would be better for Olympia. Uh, finally, uh, Olympia does better against Dorinthia than Kasai does. Um, just because you need extra damage output and Olympia has uh, just a little bit more flexibility in that matchup. Uh, also is able to deal with Decimator a little bit better as well. All right, so let's put some numbers in here. So like I said, uh, Victor is going to be better for Kasai than Olympia. How much... This is probably a three and a half matchup. So remember, guys, this is out of 10. So, and this is assuming very, very high level players, right? Dromai, this should be equally bad as all the others. Uh, Dromai is really an illusionist in general, has always been one of the most annoying things for warriors to deal with. Bravo, uh, this should be, Kasai's number should be higher. Uh, not significantly. I'd actually say Olympia is actually decent against Bravo. You have maybe 5.75, something like that. Uh, Kasai is, let's see, did, did we even put, we didn't actually even put this in there. Um, this should favor Kasai pretty heavily, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Bolton should so if if it's rated Bolton Olympia basically never has attack actions. If it is a combo Bolton Olympia is actually one of the few heroes that could actually survive the whole combo, and he could put pressure on them. So I think that's actually fine for for Olympia. Leviya, this should be about the same. Um. I'd say I'd say these are about five to to be frank. Mainly because of the weapon difference here and Olympia just as a as a default is a little bit weaker than Kasai is. Kano, Olympia should do actually better than that uh Kasai. Not significantly better, but like you have a lot more blues. Um Dash, this should be about five as well. Azalea should be slightly unfavored. Dorinthius should be, I actually think, slightly Olympia favored, if you play it right. And, oh, Tatsu. I'm just going to put it at 4.25. Same as uh, Kasai. 
And then Prism is about the same as well. Okay, so there you go. Uh, kind of, kind of uh, belted it out quickly there. But the main thing, like I said, is that if the Saber text is relevant, because I will do better. If the higher blue count or the ability to speed up is more relevant, Olympia will do better. If everything is about the same, on paper, Kasai should just do better, right? Okay. So, uh, we add up all these. We get 95%. Uh, so, we actually need to have another column here. Let's see. Let's see. Others. Which is 5%. Okay, so we can merge this. Uh, we don't need this. All right. Okay. All right. So we assume against others, you just win, like, let's just assume you just win 80% of your games. Uh, that's weird. Um, okay. And then, yep, this will add up there. And then this. We got a dangerous doing Excel math live on stream, you know. So we got to do what? S. Six times uh, S six times S eight. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we did the math. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, if we assume, so now we have 100% of the metagame accounted for, right? Uh, this is the expected win rate if you take these decks from my perspective uh, going into the field at Pro Tour 4, right? So Dory should win 52%. Kasai should win 51.5%. Bolton should win 50%. And Olympia should actually win 47%, which is actually uh, not too, too bad. <clears throat> uh, Olympia is four against Victor because you have Dynamo and will block for breakpoint. Sure. Uh, have you had time to play test dual wheel, dog blade, Dory? Any conclusions? I have not really done much playtesting with that. Um, no Teclovasen? Well, Teclovasen is in the other category here. Okay. Uh... Is there any questions for this chart before we move on? Like I said, uh, all the warriors are pretty close together. Um, if you brought Dory, Bolter, or Kasai, I wouldn't blink. <laughs> if you brought Olympia, I'd be like, oh, okay. I respect the hustle. Um, okay. Looks like no questions on this. Let's move on. So what do we want to talk about now? We discussed Olympia. We, we wrapped up what we needed to last week. Uh, okay. Let's, let's talk about 
Dorinthia. This is my current front runner for PT4. If the Pro Tour was tomorrow, I would be registering Dorinthia. Now, a lot of content creators do not give you a straight answer like that. You, On their podcasts, on their videos, they're like, eh, I'm like waffling. I don't really want to talk about it. I am giving you guys the inside scoop. If Pro Tour was tomorrow, I would be registering Dorinthia. The reason being is that we've seen a consolidation of the meta. And this consolidation of the meta is actually decent for Dory. So we look at what has been doing well this last couple weeks. We've seen the Guardians do well. Let's put them in a color here. Let's kind of group them. So we've seen defensive decks like the Guardians. This is also a defensive deck. Uh, we've seen offensive decks like these. Um, this is also an offensive deck. Yep. Okay, so very similar to past meta games, we can have a we have a triangle meta, right? Okay, so uh, let's 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 give the illusionist purple. Let's let's be more stands out more. Okay, so uh, do we want to classify Dory as? The mirror is. Ah, Dory's mainly aggressive these days. Okay, so basically, basically there are, there's always been like a triangle meta going on in, in Fab, and this one took a little bit longer to get to, but we're basically in a triangle meta of defensive leaning decks, aggressive leaning decks, and weird decks that do something special. Now, in the past, this was Rune Blade, Guardian, Illusionist. Now it is basically Guardian, Illusionist slash Wizard, and all the other decks. <laughs> uh, and so basically, at the current moment, other than Victor, I'm very happy to take Dory into most of the field. And in fact, the front runners of the field, KO, the way I was building Dorinthia was already favored. But if KO really is the front runner, I could build a Dory deck that smashes KO. The reason being, KO doesn't run d -reacts. If a deck does not run d they can be abused like crazy by Dorinthia. And if you look at this general metagame, there's not a lot of d in this format. The only defensive decks are Dromai, are, are these, basically, right? Now, obviously... It's not going to be the easiest thing to, to go up against Guardian as Dory. But this is where the new tools that I talked about come into play. So I've tried to build a deck that utilizes commanding performance more, shift the tide of battle more, and it operates quite aggressively normally i play warrior very mid-rangey and slightly defensively but in order to utilize cards like this i think you have to build your whole deck around it and so that's what i've been trying to do uh i'm going to show you guys a build that i've been working on but given the consolidation of the metagame i think the current state is actually great for Dory. <clears throat> what about a pure Raiden build? Uh, there is very little point in building a pure Raiden build when 
it costs only four sideboard slots to to improve a lot of your matchups. <clears throat> Roger will say Bolton is the best deck. I think Bolton is a totally fine choice. I have no qualms with Bolton being A or S. When will Dorinthia use Decimator in the current meta? I think you don't actually need it in the current meta. The only heroes I'd run Decimator against, and this is probably going to bite me in the ass because if any of my opponents watch this at Pro Tour 4, they're like, her, 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 Josh is on Dawnblade. But uh, basically you only need it against Riptide and Arachne and Azuri. Uh, if you run decimate a great axe into, into those three heroes, you basically can't lose. Uh, Josh, do Kasai content, please. Well, uh, maybe after Pro Tour 4, that might happen. Um, <clears throat> okay. So... I was building this last night. I did not finish everything I wanted to do. So let's finish building this. As you can see, I have 91 cards. This is too many. So I looked at the metagame and I was like, well, if we're going to play aggressively, we might as well add glistening back. So <laughs> I know we've been waffling back and forth, guys, but... uh I think it's back to three glistening, three twitting blades now. All right. So what did we change for that? We changed the yellow warrior's valor into the glistening, and we added a twinning blade because if you're playing this many uh, steel blades, you might as well run uh, all the twinning blades. Um. So yeah, as you can see here, I tried to include two copies of Shift the Tide of Battle. I'm really going to try to get this to work. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. Um. I've included both helmets here. I've decided to go AB3 as well. I might go down to AB2. Uh, like, cut the Null Rune robe. And then I got a bunch of, you know, my favorite sideboard cards here in the side. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's try to finalize this deck and take it for a spin here. So, let's think here, right? So, so I... I the the main the main reason I want I wanted to do this stream was to try to get these two cards to work. This this card here, commanding performance, and shift the tide of battle. Now we go so basically Warrior got three new majestics, right? We got Blade Flurry. Everybody and their mom knows Blade Flurry is good, right? It's easy to use. Shift the Tide of Battle is not easy to use. In fact, it's actually... This card is very difficult to use in Dawnblade. It's much easier to use this in the dual-wielding decks. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if, if, I, if I'm doing this correctly. So how I how I supported Shift of the Tide of Battle, I put in a couple edge heads, which may not even be the correct card. This might even this card probably should be lead for speed or something. Um, we added some determinations, you know, got a couple sharpened steels. We have some supremacies, right? So that's the theory. <laughs> uh, I I think the theory is just basically to make it uh because there's more aggressive decks that don't want to block this card could become okay <laughs> i still don't know if this is all the all the support it needs but we're gonna try it and we have the commanding performances as well um there was a deck list i saw let me see if i can pull this up there was a deck list that 
I thought was pretty interesting. It did well. I think it won an RTN in, I want to say Australia, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull up that list. I saw this yesterday and I was like, okay, there's some interesting things here. It's like really, really, really aggressive. Let's see if I can find it. So much Dory chat. Ah, okay, yeah. This is a kitten lover's deck. And I was like, okay, I like some of the things here. I was like, okay, a fatal engagement here. There's no route. So I'm an old warrior. I admit I can be stuck in my ways. I'll be like, of course we run route. What are, of course, right? However, I, I, with all these new cards, I'm like, okay, there might be another way to build things that might even be better, right? So this, this list running single copy of Fatal Engagement, no route, no overpower, except in the sideboard. And if you think about this, like in the current metagame, where where is this not gonna get value? Kasai, Dory, Dromai, Kano. Every other matchup here, if they're blocking, they're blocking with an attack action. So this card, this might be a good metagame choice, right? So I, I like this. I also like moving some of the blues into Fatal Engagement. I thought that was quite nice. You know, moving away from the blue overpower. A couple, of, couple copies of Agile Engagement similar to the Fatal Engagement, right? And running copies of Lead with Speed. So originally I was like, I don't really know about this card because it forces you to play aggressively. Well, if you build your deck aggressively, then being forced to play aggressively is not a bad thing, right? So I think I'm going to try to incorporate a couple copies of this as well. Got three copies of Glistening Steel Blade here. Two copies of Warrior's Valley, which is kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if two copies of Spells of War, two copies of War. So that's another thing, right? Of course you run three copies of Spoils of War and Dawn Blade Dory. Well, maybe you don't, you know? So a couple copies there. Everything else looks pretty standard here. Triple Chorus of Iron Song. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, this is another reason why I like Dory in this metagame. This card completely shits on Prism. <laughs> so, really, really, really useful to have. Um, oh. Yeah, Lead with Speed, Edge Ahead has anti-synergy with Shift. That is correct. That That is... That's this is where I'm finding like this card to be really weird to use. I I want to make this work because in general majestics are your power cards, right? Uh but I'm not sure if it could be done. It might be like you're supposed to combine commanding performance with shift. But it's like, well, how often is that going to light up, right? Because you need your hand to be Commanding performance, shift, and a blue. Eh. Uh, wasn't Brian G talking about fatal engagement? Uh, talking about that where? Okay, anyways. Uh, so yeah. I've also liked how this deck has moved away from Crown of Providence. Uh... The only deck you'd actually want Crown of Providence against is Bravo. Nobody else is pummeling you in this format. So, I quite like this setup here. Running this as the core. And then AB2, I think, is probably the way to go. No Decimator. No AB3. No Double Crown. I think this is actually the correct way to play it. So, let's make those cuts here. So, let's remove this. Uh, AB2... So I think I, I I thought about this today. I was like, is AB3 Bolters better or is AB2 Grains Bolters better? And I think AB2 Grains Bolters is better because 
there are Kano uses his life as a resource, right? And if you use your life as a resource, that means I'm going to hit you as Dorinthia, which means I have the ability to spill over vigor tokens from turn to turn. And one of the ways you just instantly lose the game is when you draw four reds as Dory. And this kind of insulates you against that. So I do like this. All right. So let's move these up here. So we'll run these five and then we'll have AB2. So this actually does free up a lot of sideboard slots when we're running this same configuration against most decks. So we're running only seven equipment, which is good. All right. Now, another thing is that it looks like this Dory deck has two CNCs here, CNC in the side, and basically is not... Uh, Is not um it's not running Fendel's Fighting Spirit, not running Down and Dirty, not running a lot of other poppers, not running Remembrance. So I'm and I'm I'm much more of a fan of uh seven power poppers than six power poppers because of uh all the Halo shenanigans that uh Prism can do. And I, I've said this many times. I don't think Command and Conquer is a good card in Dory. If you're... I've, I've said this many times, so I'll try to be brief. In Dory, there's three ways that you could approach things. You go through. So you are you attack for six. They block for six. And you say, overpower. Plus six. I'm going through your block. You can go around their block. You attack for six. They block six. You say, all right, twinning blade. I'm going to go around your block. I'm going to attack you again. The other way is to play attack action cards. You swing for six. They block six. You're like, all right, fine. Pitch CNC. Now, the issue is that you can't do all three at the same time. And this card without... The, the main thing is that it costs two. This is very, very difficult to take advantage of. However, however, if we're generating a ton of agility tokens, maybe the turn can start with CNC? This, this is where I'm like, okay, my, my old-fashioned Dory Crucible of War era... Warrior mindset says, this costs two. This isn't good. You're not running Pummel. Why are you running Command and Conquer? But maybe just generating a lot of agility tokens and saying, okay, I'm just going to start the turn with CNC and then go into Dawnblade shenanigans. It's like, okay, maybe that's enough to work. I, I don't know. So the, let's ask... I've been ranting a lot. I want this to be more back and forth. Do you guys think Command and Conquer is better, or do you guys think Fendel's Fighting Spirit is better? Because I think that's really what the the, the uh, this is going to come down to. So Fendel's Fighting Spirit works against Dromai and Prism. Also will gain life occasionally against uh, Dromai. But this means we have no tricky mix-ups with Command and Conquer. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Why shift with uh, speed good worth other... Uh, yes, we're, we're trying to figure out if shift the tide of battle is good. I'm just going to try to get it to work. I, it's gonna, it might be very difficult to get it to work. Um, back to plow through. Uh, okay, that that's a whole nother story there, Jacob. Maybe plow through has been kind of so. There's like three cards that are I really like as as Dory, but I hardly play them. Biting blade. You guys know I love biting blade. I like plow through as well. 
and I also like push forward. But I haven't been able to run push forward or plow through in a deck in a long time. <laughs> Wage gold for cop for popper, maybe. Okay. That does work well with the agile engagement, fatal engagement. Um I guess it also combines a lead with speed, but of course that costs three. The thing is we don't want to be playing our poppers in general. Um I sort of like the idea of Agile Windup as a popper. It could also help with Go Again. It gets better when you can use Fatal Engagement as a blue pitch at a vigor. Okay. Starting CNC, then going with what you really want to hit sounds really good. Yo, can you please stop posting this bullshit and post Yu-Gi-Oh content? <laughs> oh, my friend. this is That is a long, long time ago. Uh, in my meta, there are too many Kano's to not CNC. Okay, that's that's an that's an interesting point. CNC is uh, that's actually very interesting because there there are quite a few decks in the format that really do need to protect their arsenal card, right? So, uh, combo Bolton or just Bolton in general, uh. All the Brutes generally have a high-value target in Arsenal. Kano obviously has a high-value thing in Arsenal. Uh, Azalea obviously has to protect her Arsenal as well. So, and Dory and Katsu generally. So there's there's a lot of... Okay, I can could, I could see the reason there, yeah. <clears throat> push forward for life. Yeah, hell yeah. For those of you who don't know what push forward is, let's see if I can pull that up for you guys. This... I, I loved this card so much. This is how I ended games with Kasai in Crucible of War. So that's before Everfest. That's before <laughs> that's before Blade Runner. Before all the one-headed support. This is how I ended games. <laughs> Spoils of War, Saber. Push forward, Saber. Clean. Okay. All right. CNC has been has a relevant on hit, and if you're going to be running fatal engagements, it is easy to set up an eleven power CNC. Hmm. I literally sub to this channel for Yu-Gi-Oh content. You could go watch some VODs, my friend. Uh, okay. I should call it Force Forward for how much I refuse to let that card go after old Kasai LLing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Push Forward. There's not a lot of spots for it now. Do you know what is interesting about this card? It has the template very similar to Hit and Run. It says, if you've attacked with a weapon this turn, your next attack, not your next warrior attack, your next attack gains Dominate. So if that has Go Again, somehow, because obviously you don't want to waste this plus three buff to your weapon attack, Something, some shenanigans could happen, basically. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's let's make a let's make a decision on the CNC versus the Pendle's Fighting Spirit here. So I think because this player was running triple chorus, they were able to go okay. Against Prism, we have Chorus. Against Dromai, we have Command and Conquer. And everything is fine. But if we really want to save sideboard slots, which I really want to save sideboard slots, uh, 
we kind of need cards that are good against both of them. So I'm going to I'm going to start off with just Fendel's Fighting Spirit. We're not going to put uh we're not going to put a uh, CNC in. Okay. Let's let's remove this edge ahead here and add the lead with speed. I feel like that's a card that if we're going to be aggressive, we're going to be aggressive. So now he was running two. Yeah, he was running two. Hmm. Okay. This is interesting because now it's like, okay, we have. And he's not running sharpened steel. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's remove the route. As, as much as that pains me to do. And we'll add a fatal engagement to the sideboard here so we can bring it in. Uh, do we still need to keep our overpower yellow and our biting blade? So overpower yellow and biting blade, they kind of serve the same purpose. They're both used to, um, uh, get through, uh, sink blows. I think the yellow overpowers might be, be a bit more useful. So let's just trim some fat here. Feel like we... Probably can't include Yellow Iron Song response here. Okay. Are we close to 80? No, we're not. We're still at 85. Ugh. <laughs> so many decks want to set up. I think CNC is so relevant. Being able to run that as well as commanding performance both seem to be good. I've always liked multiple, like, breaking point and send packing. Mm -hmm. Agile windup has value on turn zero. Sure. Are we sure that Tunic is worse than Grains and Dory? Yes. <laughs> uh, tunic generates a resource versus transferring an unused resource from a previous turn. So the only reason to run Tunic is if you're running Shunt. And the only reason to run Shunt is when we're in a heavy Bravo Azalea Domblade Dory meta. You can do very well with high armor plus sink fate against those decks. That's the thing. You look at how much armor we have here. We have two, two plus one, two plus one, and one. In addition, all, most of our cards block three. If we have a D React set, we basically are invincible. I think Fatal Engagement can be our route, basically. In the blue slot, this is a little bit more risky, though. <laughs> it's a bit more risky. But let's try it. The, the, I've tried traditional Dory for so long that I'm like, okay, let's, let's just try some new cards and let's see. Half part of me is tempted just to run this deck list and see how it feels. <laughs> that might be the correct way to do it. Um, so yellow cards is running 14. How many are we running? We have 14 as well. All right. Let's go with determinate. Termination here. So currently the list does not have a way to get over a D react, which is annoying. I do like going th through my opponents quite often. The only current, yeah. So currently the only way to go through is like singing into puncture, which is fine. Hmm. It's very weird. He he puts commanding in the main deck. Which I I don't think you could put commanding it. 
uh, every fiber of me says you can't just put this main deck, but maybe you can. Maybe you can. Uh... Maybe he was walking with the course to generate a courage to try to reset tempo with CNC seven. I I feel like this deck list is just so aggressive that. Twenty blues main deck two in the sideboard. It's a very similar ratio here. All right, I think we just need to try this <laughs> and see how it feels. We have eighty five cards right now. Ugh. Are we cutting sharp and steel to make room? I guess we are. Eighty three cards still. It's interesting. Only running sink below as a defensive card is really really asking to get beat up by Azalea and I don't know, man. This there's so many things that are screaming out to me that's like this deck list is really I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is it possible to play instant go again rather than front pumps? Shift, glint, run through. That's something I tried to build. I tried to build a uh, unified decree deck. That was all reactions, basically. Uh, that did not work. Let's just run his list for a game and we'll figure this out. I'm pretty sure this doesn't flow well but I could be wrong I could be wrong Oh god, it's Katsu. Oh man. All right. I guess we take our uh I take those cards in, take some CNC's in. Seven seven. Heart did get us killed. Let's take that out. <laughs> Uh, any other cards we don't really want? Do we need CNC against Katsu? Let's try it. Let's see how this goes, guys. I've played my own list too much. That I kind of need to, uh, I kind of need to experiment. Five go again here. Okay, so we want to keep our blue plus our go again. We probably can't keep either one of them, to be honest. Or should I keep this? <laughs> we're blocking with the cards that we're. We're wanting to test. Hmm. All 
right. Okay, we got glistening, which is good, but it's better to pay for these, I think. So heart and cross strap here. It's got two armor available, which is not a lot. Okay. So basically he's saying that he has the uh, flick flack to go to eight. Guess we just do this now. Get our uh, quicken token. I expect this to be directed. Yep. Okay, so very early armor usage there, which is good. So let's see if we can pair this with a something strong. This is something strong. <clears throat> So we already have the agility token here. That's kind of the annoying thing. Maybe we should swing and then glistening on the second swing. So. That was a sink from hand as well. And this is an MOM Katsu, so. That's a little bit unconventional. Normally, you see links. All right. Do we want to give him armor, or are we just happy with going with this? I think we're happy going with this, right? So, block here. Okay. Take three. Time to get some counters, boys. Counter secured. Oh no. Well, definitely going to be sinking out some of these. Art of War here. Okay. So now we definitely want to get Balance of Justice value here. Yeah, it might be something like they're comfortable with the list, but in the hands of others, not so much. Yep, could be. Okay, so discarded whelming, grabbed descendant. Okay. So do we block here? I think we do.
Wow. This is something I need to be more, more cognizant of. When my opponent takes everything, there's a reason for that, right? Okay, so do I play around the third Ancestral here? I don't think we need to. I think we could... Did he not Art of War draw? He did. Okay. Does he really have the uh, Ancestral here? Let's draw a card here. Sweet. This hand's great. Okay, so we've... So hit, hit, block. Okay. Doesn't have a full combo line on the board, so... Even if he grabs Dishonor, it doesn't, it's not going to be active. It's just damage here. Oh, he's going back to Welbing, huh? Okay, that's fine. This is a weird combo from him. So there's no Surgic Strike on the line here, so this doesn't matter. Here we could just block to prevent the MOM trigger. Uh, should we sync anything? We probably sync the commanding performance for another pump. That's pretty good. This hand's really, really aggressive here. So we've... <laughs> Hit, hit, block, hit, hit, block, hit. So we played around mass perfectly here. The game's basically over here. This brings it to 11. Fatal engagement, pretty good, guys. So here, we're not going to go for boots here. We're just going to secure it. A fifth card here. Oh yeah, this card. This is pretty good. Now we have. Now we could use the boots. So we'll Vigor and we'll Bracer and we'll Swing and we could puncture this or yeah it doesn't matter okay glistening steel blade confirmed good we knew that already i felt like i didn't learn anything that game okay let's try again so 
PSA to Katsu players, don't don't let glistening steel blade hit. All right, this guy already has something that says brute. So let's see if I click this, what, what's going to happen here? All right, what did he add? Agile engagements, that's what went in. The CNCs went out, the agile engagements went in. That's what happened. Damn, my Katsu games don't look like that. Well. <laughs> I mean, Fatal Engagement, Agile Engagement, pretty good against the, the meta at the moment. All right, Kao, bring it on. Got a heart and cross strap instead of a tunic here. Okay. All right, are we going to swing and pour damage into him? Arsenal iron song response, because he's not gonna block. Or do we try to get a counter here? By pitching these cards. Pitch these cards, glint, and we have response. That's six damage versus three, six, eight. So I think let's go for that. There's also a non-zero chance that he gives us reprise here. Not sure if this is correct, but ah, we got punished, guys. <laughs> Okay, so no fear here is from Arsenal, banish three cards. So this is blocking five here. Where X is two plus the number of cards banished to play this. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. That's also why uh, uh, Courts of Iron Song is good. This is why I think the current meta is like you, you play two of them. All right. Do we balance a justice here or on the next Blood Rush? We don't have a go against source right now. I feel like we're just going to block this turn. Very happy to just block. This is not a brute card. What are you doing, bro? Okay, probably ending with cast bones here. So we can play goblet out. Yeah, that feels fine. Damn course would have been uh, nice there. Yep, yeah, exactly. Where's our 3x course? Apparently he doesn't run it into this matchup. Cast bones, yep. All right, reveal Blood Rush Bellow, Bear Fangs, Beast Within, Skull Crack, Send Packing, Bear Fangs. All right, so no blue in that hand and a BRB. Okay. Why did he get an agility token? Oh, he discard. Okay, right. 
water spell discarded it. No, wait, hold on. Oh, he had a might token revealed five. Okay, so yeah, that that makes sense. Okay, this is unfortunate that we can't put any pressure on, and he might have another blood spell to turn here. All right, uh, pitch, pitch, bear fang. Okay. Oh, he played a Blutter Spell this turn as well. Okay. Uh, well, this hand is... I mean, this hand can get one... Theoretically, this hand could get counters, but it's not. This is not the hand to do it on. I think we just defend here. Uh, let's defend like this. And we'll draw a card here. Oh, sorry. That's not... I guess it's fine to 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 take five here because we have to block whatever else is coming. Mm -hmm. So actually, we have a vigor and an agility. So we actually kind of do want to keep. Uh, we have to keep two cards because we can't pitch. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is a beat down here. At turn zero, uh, no fear is... <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so... Yeah. Okay. Should be okay, I guess. <laughs> On the bright side, two blood rushes down. That is true. All right, he is giving reprise here. I think we just pump it here. Save this for later. Then we can grains, brace, or swing. This is going to take a lot of, uh, we're going to take a long time. A, a, this is going to take a, a hell of a comeback here. <laughs> but we don't give up. Bring it on, Kea. So BRB is on top, huh? I mean, this is, uh... Okay, vanilla damage here. Interesting. So we don't have go again in this hand. Okay. So, I 
if I play commanding performance, he's not. I, I don't even need this next turn, right? He's not going to block. So basically, I uh, I need to keep this because I need I need both these pumps to get over a block like this. Maybe I do have to play this actually. I do have to play this, even though it's not really going to do anything. Oh shit! He still has an action point. Oh, he rolled. Did he roll scabs? He did. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so now he doesn't even have anything in arsenal. Okay, he's gonna draw BRB, just fine. I can block like this. Yeah, block like this. If he throws all his armor. This plus this doesn't get through it. So I kind of need to keep this card so I can go to seven. All right, that's what we got to do. We got to do it. Oh, no. Another situation where having the bigger token is bad. I can't pitch the Agile Engagement. Ugh. Now, if this gets intimidated out, we're in trouble. Ugh. It's not It's not the worst, but we'll have to arsenal it. Ugh. Oh, man. Ah! Vigor token came back to bite us. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we can preserve our counter. Is that worth it? Probably it's worth it. Arsenal this? I guess it's better than nothing. Oh, no. We Wait, wait, wait. wait we, can't, we can't even do that. We can move Puncture into Arsenal. We don't even have the pitch. Ah. It's fine. We'll just move Puncture to Arsenal. That was... Uh, this This game has actually been a disaster here. This Chaos has been getting very, very lucky. And we have all these two blocks here. Ah, this game's over. This game's over. As I as I suspected, this deck is a little clunky. I don't think there's anything we can do here. Yeah. Uh And this is why I don't play a bunch of two blocks. Mm. You have no ability to pivot. That's the issue. If you don't have the ability to pivot. We don't give up. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how uh, how I'm supposed to come back from 32 to 7.
This is this is a very high roll game from KO, yes. But this is why Dorinthia builds have to be in a particular way to navigate situations like this. All right. So let's see here. Let's get Valor into Arsenal, I think is the best play here. Okay, now if we can get away with just blocking with two cards, we'll be happy. Okay, so he's going to discard a Agile Windup, I presume, to get this go again. Yep, there it is. Wow, just an arsenal pass from him, okay. Hmm. All right. The glimmers of a comeback. <laughs> Armor here. Nope. Ah, uh, heart's gonna get us killed, guys. Heart's gonna get us killed. Heart's gonna get us killed. Oh, no. You wonder what the average value of the KO has? Well, we'll find out soon. Ah, uh, the heart's going to get us killed. I can smell it already. Yep. So. So. What did I say when I manually sideboarded this? I said, we take out the heart, right? When I clicked on this guy's sideboard, he just kept it in. Oh, man. GG. All right, let's, let's do some stats here. Let's see. This was uh, about 16. I don't know if that's high or low. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Okay, so there's some things I like about this list. There's some things I don't like about this list. There's some way, some things I like about how he sideboarded. There's some things I don't like about how he sideboarded. Let's go back to my list. Let's not let's not run lead for speed. Let's run one shift. I don't know if the Fatals should be in here, because I don't like cards that only perform in one matchup. Should we go back to a more... Yeah, let's... Let's go with free precision press here. And... Let's try Blade Flash. That's a card we haven't used in a while. Or it could be a third emboldened blade. Maybe it should be a third emboldened blade. I like this card a lot. It was my spoiler card, but also getting people's DVX always feels good. Okay, so is this the standard? So we glint, Warrior's Valor, Precision Press, Hit and Run, yep. 
So it's 12. Response over power. Yep, so this looks fine. Got 21 blues. There needs to be sharpened steel in this deck. Yeah, I took out I took out Blade Flash. <laughs> I don't want another two block. This list looks very similar to my to my other list. Guys, I I don't know how to get this card to work. I, I keep on thinking like ha uh. is this card just bad? You like route more than red fatal engagement? I mean route is way more universal. Shift only feels good with Blade Flurry. It's just, it is just bad. Yeah, I mean it's it is bad glint, yes. It is a win more card, yes, yes. I I can't get this card and this card to work, which is very saddening. Like, in order for this card to be good, they have to block, which means you have to be threatening something, and they have to have an arsenal. The, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> shift is gas dual wield, but I don't know if it's really useful in Dawnblade, sure. Caught his heart. <laughs> you just play it when you already have a counter. I think you could comfortably fit it too into the list. When you have a counter, they want to block. When when you when you draw, when you have a Dawnblade counter, and you draw this, are you happy? You'd rather this be a pump, right? Commanding. Performance should work with wagers. Yeah, that's true. And Dory doesn't wager much, I guess. It works well with CNC. Fatal engagement does, yes, but we're not running Tunic, so it's... Are we missing Goblet? No, we're not missing Goblet. And we are back on Glistening. Sometimes it's just a bad sharpened steel and that's all right. Is it all right? <laughs> a one cost card in Dorinthia has to be very good. So let, let me explain a little bit about how I've been feeling, right? I build a Dorinthia deck. It does well. And then I'm like, Maybe there's another way to build Dory. And I go explore, and then I start questioning a lot of things for myself. Like, am, am I supposed to be running Precision Press Blue? A lot of other people aren't running Precision Press Blue. I mean, the only time you want this card is against Dromai. But once in a while, you, you gain tempo. And then you have to use this as your go-against source? Okay. 
I don't know. I'm just having a this 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 whole pro tour prep has given me a lot of a a lot of headache. Let's just put it that way. I I might just be overthinking things way too much. Like maybe I'm just literally supposed to include basically go back to my 2023 RTN list which is just like all right, we're running Iron Song Response and Overpower. So the modern version would be we're running Iron Song Response, Blade Flurry, and Overpower. Screw the rest of the reactions. I don't care. I I think even in that one, I don't even know if I was running determination. Let's see. Oh, my list should be here somewhere. Let's see. Oh, uh, yep. Here we go. This is what I played for last RTN. Eight Iron Song response, eight overpower. No determination, actually. Oh, there was a sideboard. Okay. And the deck was like, we're going to put down Warrior's Valor and we're going to say, do you have a D react? Yes. Okay. Even value. Oh, if I have overpower, then not even value. You don't? Well, then I get a counter. <laughs> this is my favorite Dory list ever because of how stupidly simple it was. It's like, how do you build Dory? Well, you put Iron Song Response, Overpower, and Warrior's Valor there. And then you include your specializations. <laughs> Actually, no, it's even simpler than that. How to build a Dory deck. You put in your Iron Song Response, your Overpower, your Warrior's Valor. Then you put in every helmetless Dory card that exists. And then you're like 95% of the way there. This list did have determination. Yeah. This list... <laughs> oh, man. I loved this list. <laughs> This is this is what I was like. You know what? We're overthinking things too much. We're trying to be too cute. Did I even have a puncture? Nope. This was during the Lexi meta, so it wasn't even a puncture here. Yeah. I. I feel like maybe I'm just overthinking things right now. I'm just like too tempted by all the new stuff. I should just be like, all right, Blade Flurry, you're in. Goblet, you're in. All right, same deck list. Let's go. <sighs> okay. Sorry for ranting. Let me see what the chat's up to. I think commanding only seems bad because you only see the outcome of them and not blocking... Uh, oh, commanding is not main deck card. I cited it against fatigue decks and Azalea. Mm hmm. Dory is weird, but Iron Song Pride gets you your first counter, and then you can force blocks because of it. Iron Song Pride is a good card. I like that card. But it needs the right meta. I use I use that in the. Lexi meta because you just needed the the speed. I agree with Josh. One cost Dory has to be really good. Yep. Why are we low on Goblet? We're not low on Goblet. Goblet's great. I think Goblet is a two of though because you never want to see two copies at the same time. I like run through. Maybe it's just me. Run through is not a bad card. How do you feel shift the tide of battle is similar to glistening and that it needs support to work? Or do I feel? Shift the tide of battle, man. I
when I first saw these cards, I was like, okay, this is very strong. I tried them out. I'm like, no, it's not very strong. Now I'm starting to see them pop up in a lot of lists. And it's making me question. That's kind of the issue here. I'm having imposter syndrome. It's like, do I really know how to play Dory? Why is everybody building Dory different than me? <laughs> Copy the deck and replace Iron Sark Responsible Blade for it. Yep, that's what that's very close to what I'm doing. Overthinking is a real thing, yes. Like, let's let's just talk about how Dory generates value. It's through hitting twice. If you hit, if you swing twice, sorry, it's actually this hero ability. If this triggers. It basically says gain three or four value. That's why having this card is so stupidly good. This card is so stupidly good. Because it converts Valor Blue and a Red into what? We go Valor, pitch a blue, swing, the six. They block six, we iron soccer spots, we go to nine. Then we swing again. We got 12 value from three cards. 12 value from three cards. If we attack twice. If her hero ability triggers. In order for this to trigger, we need the... It even says it literally. Literally. Look at this. You must have an action point to attack an additional time. Okay? It's it's giving you a hint. <laughs> right? So if Dory has go again and an attack reaction, she could convert into above rate damage. If she doesn't have go again, doesn't have reactions... She's below rate. It's just that simple. So anything that helps her get action points or helps her hit so she can attack an additional time is good. That's why cards like this are bad. <laughs> That's why cards like this... The effect is good, but you think about it this way. You you have this card, but then you also... That means you have three other cards. You need a resource card. And then what? You need a go again card. And then you need a pump. You need the perfect four card hand for this card to be good. That's the, that's the issue. Is that this card needs so much support. <laughs> Whereas Iron Song Response just says, if you have go again, this card's god tier. Warriors Valor says, if you have a pump, this card is gone tier. Go with your gut. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Like, everybody's overthinking it. How do you get value with Dorinthia? You smack them twice. That's how you get value from Dorinthia. You don't get value from Dorinthia by playing Command and Conquer. By playing shift the tide of battle. Every card needs to contribute to go again or hitting them. In the most energy efficient manner possible. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I've been kind of like rambly. I've just, just been uh, having doubts. Which is bad when you're playing... A hero that requires a lot of confidence. Uh, three punctures. Yeah. Puncture is definitely useful in this metagame. My arch again. Everyone had 12 D-Rex minimum. So I have no idea what to prepare it around anymore. 
Oh, if your RT has that many D-Reacts, you have to have a Decimator Great X. Thoughts on Visit the Imperial Forge? What? Is that the one that gives piercing to your swords and daggers? I, I have no idea why you would ever run this. Uh... I saw some guy win an RTN with horn and Dory. I was confused. <laughs> this is this is the issue. This is the issue. People could be winning on Dory because their opponents suck. I know that's really harsh, but if your opponents suck, it doesn't matter what Dory build you're on. <sighs> it doesn't matter how you build Dory in comparison to the others, Josh. You still know how to use a deck and can perform better than others anyways. Thank you, Gavin. Go with your gut. Play the way you want and win. <sighs> Do you think dual wield Dory will ever be good? Possibly. I think Hatchet's Dory is actually not bad at all. Uh, Hatchet's story is very good until you get to the very top level. Then uh, it's a little too obvious when you're trying to triple hit people. Yes, streamline the deck. Yeah, so the deck can be super. The deck can be super streamlined. You know what? Let's just let's just take this. Let's make a personal copy. Okay. <laughs> we could actually do this really easily. Goodbye, Crown. Add balance. Okay, we add Blade Flurry. Okay. Okay, we take out Yellow Iron Song Response. So that's basically Blade Flurry. Uh, we add Goblet. We add like two Goblets maybe. Uh, this is also before Emboldened Blade was a thing. Hmm. So we could, we could add Emboldened Blade as well. Yeah. Um, and we remove this, remove this, remove dynamos, remove shunt, uh, remove run through, add fate, add grains, and then Bolters becomes main deck. Oh, this is also this is 2023 RTN, so this is when we were disrespecting Kano. Uh null rune gloves and hood. Okay. S and we don't need driving blade. We can move those. Why were we running three epoch? That's a good question. This probably should be one epot, one heart, maybe. Is heart even good in this meta, guys? What do you think? Probably not, right? Maybe two epot is a play because we're 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 very heavy on the uh, overpowers, so actually having the epots are useful. And then iron sock probably could be something else because we uh, iron sock probably could be a popper, I guess, because we we have a. Uh, Oh, it can be a, a popper plus a uh, chorus. Okay. See? Ta-da. Already done, guys. <laughs> Speed deck building there. Uh, so there you go, crocodile. I have streamlined the deck. <laughs> Lead with speed is still good, though. Guaranteed go again for the next turn. Yes, but it forces you to play the card. And it forces you to keep a card for paying for it.
Take it on the chin should be in the sideboard. Probably. Yeah, that's the problem with agility and Dory. You agility is less good than it looks. You need to get the agility for basically free for it to be good. What's the preferred type of metagame to target with Dory? A bunch of decks that are not running DREX. It's, it's just that simple. I don't know if you guys remember when Starvo was running around. Starvo made everybody put in unmovable into their deck. That was not a good time. Oh, we forgot Puncture and Agile Engagement. Those are probably should be in here somewhere, too. All right. S something like this. It can be cut down a little bit, but yeah. Triple Red Overpower. We ain't messing around. <laughs> this card I've always loved. I, I, as much as I, I enjoy a good, you know, them blocking 12 twinning blade going around, I love them laying 12 down and me going like, all right, I'm going to go to 14. <laughs> Three pots for Icelander. That's correct. Good job. You, you remember what the metagame was like. Yep. The three E pots were for Icelander. You were correct. And that's what Iron Song Pride was also for. Yep, 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 yep. Good job on you. You get a you get an A on your history lesson. Uh, death to monkeys. <laughs> no heart, bad. You mean not having heart is bad, or heart is a bad card? You should have put in your deck. What, what do you mean, Josh? How would you make a warrior fabled? Would you make it a gem? The simplest, lowest hanging fruit is. You pitch it, it makes a courage token. Just that simple. Make it blue. That's really boring, though. <laughs> How I'd like to see it is you pitch it, you may exchange your weapon for a weapon from your sideboard. That might be cooler. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. what's your guilty pleasure meal in the u.s i guess it's it's korean barbecue um they've just opened some korean barbecue places near me and uh-oh <laughs> speed running deck building yep is dauntless worth it if your meta has a bunch of unmovables no. This card is much better than Dauntless. Three red overpower seems like a lot. Uh, yes. It is a lot. It probably should be two. Especially considering we're running Puncture. I remember putting Unmovable into Starvo meta on Boost Dash. Yep. Route is basically the same thing for one less mana. Yeah. So what are you saying? You're saying we should run three route, no overpower? Heart is bad in this meta. Okay, that, that's what I thought. I think uh, two E pot probably better than uh, one E pot, one heart. 
I really can't wait for the inevitable weapon master style warrior. So you're talking about the guy that can dual wield two handed weapons. Gem that puts a plus one counter on your sword when you pitch it would be interesting. That would also be stupidly strong. I I think I think a uh, a simple card design would be kind of like Spirit of Arena. You put it into the it's it's a gem that you put into the field, and it can say something like I don't know, but I maybe make it go away if you haven't dealt damage. And at the start of turn, make a courage token. I don't know, something like that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. What's Biting Blade for? Biting Blade is to pair with Singing Steel Blade to go to plus five. When can you tell someone has a D React in Arsenal for Emboldened Blade? Uh, you just play enough flesh and blood and you will get a good sense. <laughs> I'm honestly considering going two route. Yeah, I can see it. Playing a lot of copies of route actually makes your turn zero very good. Because if you draw route turn zero, you often start with like three extra damage. Titan's Grip Warrior and Fab, yep. Been playing two route in Olympia is kind of gas. Okay. Which matchup do you want Epot? I mean, any matchup. So this originally was here for Icelander. But any matchup where you're playing overpower, you would definitely want it. Gem has, if weapon has hit, put counter might be more reasonable. Funnily enough, if pitching put a counter on any weapon, it'd be the worst in Dory because she can lose her counters if she doesn't hit. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you pitch Warrior Fabled, your next attack reaction may trigger reprise effect without a card defending the chain link. Oh, boy. Pitch Singing Steel Blade. Oh, boy. That okay, that's a really interesting effect. If if Warrior Fable was pitched for a weapon attack, the defending hero must defend with one card. It's like reverse dominate. Instead of you can only defend with one, you must defend with one. That's an effect that Warrior doesn't have. I'm surprised Warrior does not have that. They give that to Mech. They give Mech the uh, the ability to drag cards out of the hand. I played Dory Quicksilver and Blitz, and being able to hit with Glistening and having that counter forever is sweet. It is. Warrior Fable pitching and agility would be fine. Agreed. All right, guys. I'm at a loss. I, I I just need to grind a bunch of games out with Dory. <sighs> All right. You know what? Let's have some chat interaction. Let's see. Let's start a poll. I want to I want to stream a couple more games, but I want I want you guys to tell me what you want to see. What do you want to see next? Dory. Bolden. All right. 
I've posted a poll in the chat. I'm going to play some games. You tell me what you want to see. I've really poured over the cards, like looking at like, okay, did I miss anything? Like up the ante and uh, Blade Flurry are like S tier, auto includes. Raise an army is like the, <laughs> the more and more I'm looking at lists, the less and less this is being played. And then these two never really showed up. Cut the deck is not great. Fatal engagement. I've seen some people playing with it. Take the upper hand. Even in wager decks, we're not playing this card. <laughs> Agile engagement. Why does this block two LSS? Come on. If this blocked three, this would be a, almost Blade Flurry tier. <clears throat> I this card is only exists for limited. I this this has some of my favorite uh text flavor text. But uh, all right, let's see. All right, people want to see Dory. All right. All right. All right, where was my list? This was it, right? What was it? Where did it go? Okay, so this was the RTN list and we were modifying it, right? So, so you can cut a sharpened steel, I guess. This is, I, I can't remember the last time I played Valor and Glistening, but they're good. <laughs> Overpower should be in this sideboard, probably. One Puncture should be main board. Nourishing Emptiness. Couldn't be in here. Biting blade, I don't know if we need it. We're at 80 and we have no poppers right now. That's the issue. All right, let's play some games with this list. I think this is what we're going to go with. All right. <clears throat> Maybe try Andre C's Olympia. <laughs> I've improved on that deck list and I already talked about that uh, at the beginning of the uh, stream. He is Jigsaw now. Do you want to play a game? I've been playing a two of push through in Hatchet's Olympia. It definitely helps push through damage to the end of the games. You mean push forward? All right. Ending the poll now. All right. So we got uh, Victor. Sweet. I like playing against Victor. You can hear the sarcasm in my 
<laughs> All right. Uh, are we just running most things? I think we are, right? <laughs> I mean, every card other than Chorus is good. <laughs> All right. Full fat deck here against... Oh, game is too easy, boys. Turn zero, E-pot. Easy. Tech plating, sure. Pass turn. What the hell? Heaving Thunderquake. Okay. All right. So, can we play Overpower? The answer is no. So, we might as well just play these. Pitching this. Okay. It's unfortunate we don't have go again, but it is what it is. Why is our Dawn Blade so small? Why is our Dawn Blade 3? Uh, hello? Why is it on Blade 3? A am I... Am I stupid? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I uh, for some reason it didn't give me dominate or plus one, but whatever. I guess it is what it is. Uh, it's definitely a bug. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, the guy, uh, Victor said he'll just go into manual and take an extra damage, so all's good. Why do I have two action points? Or what? Are, yeah, it's very weird. Okay. Okay, so I hit him for six. Yeah, he's at 34. Okay, good. All right, all good in the world. All right, Thunderquake pops, or th the Surged pops. I presume Thunderquake is coming. All right, this hand's really good. <laughs> this hand's really nice, especially with the Vigor token. So we're going to try to keep this if we can. If it's just vanilla Thunderquake damage, you know, you just take it. <laughs> Uh, I guess there's a pummel coming, but it's not the worst. We could just discard supremacy. Yeah. All right. This is a pummel victor that we're facing. Or not. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. So maybe I was supposed to sink there. Because I'm pro I'm likely to have my arsenal free, but maybe not. We'll see. That's weird. Something is very wrong. Yes, something is very wrong because 
my attacks aren't being pumped. Ugh. What the heck is going on? Talishar. I mean, <laughs> why is it not pumping my... I've never seen Talishar bug out this bad. Did the epot break the game? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we turned the epot on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Well, we weren't going to hit anyways. <laughs> okay. Staunch from hand. Okay. All right, come on, Talishar. Let's 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 pick it up here. Okay, so we got got a eh an okay hand, an okay hand. I don't really love glistening here. I kind of just want to. I kind of just want to send these cards into him and get a vigor token. Uh, did it let you target with supremacy? I mean, there's only one weapon to target, so I don't know. This should be served for six. Okay, this worked. E pot turned zero too strong. How many sources of go again do we have in this meta, or do we need in this meta? Uh, 20. Three twenty-four. <laughs> Depends how you count goblet. So far, the Talisher bugs haven't really affected anything, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of want to sink and then move the fate into Arsenal. This hand is not good, though. I want to sink the Warriors Valor, see if we can find something better, I think. Hold the line! Yeah, that's a card I forgot. We well, should probably include some hold the line. Okay, Goblet. Mm. Goblet's okay. Oh, uh, this is so unlikely to hit. So I think we just goblet here. Swing. Because I think he's going to block for six. So the blue response is not even going to get there. And if he blocks five, it's probably gauntlets plus a card. Oh, okay. Misread that, but that's okay. Ooh, this hand's good. This hand's good. Ah, oh, 
Oh, we got a block. Well, we don't really need Singing Steel Blade here. We can block seven here. Arsenal Singing is okay. Oh, if we don't get Reprise, we can't. It's just safer to block here. Not sure if this play is right. I feel like I, I'm probably going to get denied reprise here. You think Prism will figure out how to arc light loop consistently before PT? They already know how to arc light consistently. Uh, Buckling blow, hit and run, yeah. So he, he's he got it there. Um, Bro has the whole blue face up on the field, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, why can't I swing Dawn Blade? What the heck is happening, guys? Uh, today's just not my day. So I hit, so I should be able to, and I have an action point, so I should be able to swing Dawnblade. I've I've never seen Talishar this. Yeah. I'm just going to concede this is this is getting out of hand. Well, Talishar might be having a bug or something. I don't know, guys. But Talishar did not like uh <laughs> like that. Okay, so uh that epop might have messed up something, I guess. So there was a card we were talking about, Hold the Line. I think Hold the Line is actually very good in this meta. And I like two of them. Um, the uh, blue overpowers could be replaced here. Yep. So something like this, I feel like, is pretty good here. Uh... All right. So this I'll I haven't posted any links in the chat. So let's post this one here. Yeah, I've never seen the little bubbles on Dory like that. Yeah. Okay, so this is basically taking the uh, overpowered RTN list and adjusting things. Modernizing it, as you could say. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get Talishar to play dice again. Yeah, let's close a bunch of these tabs. We don't need all these tabs. We don't need all these tabs. All right. We just need one tab open. All right, come on. Let's get a good game here. All right, Kasai, this is potentially a little tricky. So 
how defensive do I want to play is the question. That is the question. Are we just jamming everything except agile engagement and chorus here? If we want to be aggressive, we shouldn't include the DREX. Try Dauntless, please. You mean like three Dauntless? Or you're talking about like nine Dauntless? Without go again, it's it's not very useful. All right, do you think I should run the six and fades here, guys? I'm going to, but not 100% sure if I should. Just three red dotless. Hmm. Oh, baby. Sounds great. So in general, we're not blocking Kasai. Okay, so I have I'm guaranteed reprise it here. Okay, if he doesn't have a D-React, we get value here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, another hand that's very good. Did they really just block exactly on turn zero with no direct? Yeah, that wasn't correct from him. All right, we got easy red overpower here if we want. Hmm. Might have to go for a route here. I, I, I'm not actually sure if they have a D-react or not. I think we go for the route. It's close. We could just go for a red response here. Yeah, this might actually be this is the this is the simpler play. Okay, we get to grains at least, so that's cool. 
Do we brace or swing here? Yeah, we brace or swing here. I think I think you know the the speed at which the Kasai player blocked was a little too slow to have a D react. So Okay, take it on the chin, sure. Okay, this hand's really nice. Okay, so this is probably Blade Flurry here. So we'll let them play it out and then we'll sink it. No, it's not. Okay. Do we want overpower on the bottom? Now let's move it into Arsenal. Mm. It's interesting. This isn't Blade Flurry, huh? What could this be? That's really weird. Hopefully we're going to be able to hit this turn so we can kind of cycle the... Uh... Oh, sweet. We can. We can cycle a bigger token here. Probably going to get denied reprise here. Yeah, crown might shift this away. Yeah. Oh, baby. Okay, so that was spoils from Arsenal, I think. Okay. So this is going to be hard to deny copper this turn. So do we just play this and then we play the... I think we're going for a bolter break this turn. This hand's just too nice. We could supremacy swing and then we have these to pay for this. So I think we let this hit and then we'll block with armor on the second one. It probably has an attack react here as well. Nope. Okay. Generally very dangerous to just give them a bunch of copper like that, but it is what it is. Okay, do we push with the big one or the small one here? If we push with the big one, he'll definitely play his sink. If we push with the small one, he'll do I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. Okay, yeah, we're going with bolters here. Want to arsenal the e pot, or we want to make a vigor token out of it? I think we make a vigor token out of it. Okay, we don't have a d react. Uh, or sorry, not a d react. We don't have an attack react here. <laughs> D 
Did he draw a card here? So he needs to pitch for the next attack. Okay, so we're we actually can give a go again here. We can get his grains here, maybe. Yeah. I don't love this. But we're gonna do it. Could be cashing, yeah. Yeah, let's make a bigger and swing. So I think he hasn't found another D react for quite a while. Didn't he have a sink? Oh, he it's a, over here. Okay. So I think he's just on sink and um, take it on the chin. Cracking copper, maybe. I don't know. Kasai really needs a gold token to really utilize the copper. That's kind of the thing. I lost to an 18 D rec Kasai at RTN on Sunday. Kind of thought I had a good matchup to do it, but I couldn't touch her. Yeah, that's that's why I've been saying like Defensive style Kasai is actually probably the best way to play her. Okay, I expect an attack react suitish. I might, maybe I'm just supposed to block for three here. Blade flurry. Shift. Okay. Do I sink here? Yeah. Am I supposed to sink my Spoils of War? I think I'm supposed to try to find an attack react here. Okay, that's not an attack react. Funnily enough, with the Vigor token, this might actually hit with the Iron Song response. <laughs> In fact, it probably will. <laughs> Car plus Dynamos is too juicy here. Lol. <laughs> nice sink, sink below value, bro. Oh, he drew a card. Hmm. This hand's bad. This hand's bad. Okay, it doesn't have go again, so. Flint it or, okay, or that. I'm going to sink the route. Okay, much better. Mm. 
Decimator Kasai is also fun. What's a Decimator Kasai? Always fate before sync, my dude. Good point. Kasai activation into swing. Okay, this hand is garbage. Am I supposed to deny a gold token here? Hmm. Guess I'm supposed to. I haven't found a good attacking hand for so long. I found his Iron Song response. Nice. Uh oh, this hand's bad. Four reds. This is rare for this modern deck. There's not really an ideal blocking strategy against Kasai. Ideally, you're not blocking them. In the swing? Nope. Ending with two cards. That's unusual. All right, we have a Sane Steel Blade coming, so that's going to help a lot. He blocked a Blade Runner, so he has go again already. All right, so we can go with this hand. This hand's pretty strong. Well, nourishing is going to hit us, unfortunately. Could be worse. So maybe one sink, maybe one take it on the chin, still in the wild. If she's not threatening copper or gold, you generally just take it. That is a good strategy. If this was a spoils of war, this would be much more threatening.
Okay, so we'll brace or swing here, holding up one float for singing. If he doesn't block, then we can grains it. Okay. Can we end the game with this hand? Swing. I think we can. We died it in the swing here. We haven't seen a single copy of in the swing yet. Oh, we have one. Do we block with a puncture here? I think we block with the armor here. Six plus three, we go to one. It's too important having the energy to go with quitting here if we need to. Put me to one. Come on, play your arsenal. Play your arsenal, sir. You're never going to get to attack twice again for the rest of the game anyways. Interesting. This is a very, very tough spot for Kasai because uh, she has to majorly overblock. So Kasai doesn't have access to like heavy DVX. That's actually going to be the issue here for her. Cash in. Very good here. Of course, the issue is now I get to draw. <laughs> and I get to hold the line. It's too nice. Double singing here, the ultimate checkmate. Red over power for game, baby. I like Overpower Red a lot.
Okay, that felt like a pretty normal game. No Talishar bugs, at least. <laughs> GG. So the card in the arsenal was actually cash in. Okay, so. Yeah. Red overpower is the most satisfying kill. I agree. Route feels kind of cheap. Overpower is like, yeah, I had three energy sitting around and a card. That's why you died. <laughs> the art is also very nice in this one. <clears throat> okay, this deck feels much, much more like what I'm used to playing. <laughs> Straightforward standard Dory. We have go again. We have pumps. <laughs> Does it get more simple than this? I wonder what 18D react because I looks like that's basically unwinnable. Like, yeah. What's good about biting blade? Biting Blade with Singing Steel Blade is plus five. This is a pet card of mine. It may not be. Uh... This, this meta, I think, is okay for Biting Blade. Classic fab art on Overpower, yeah. Yep. Had a game where I exact lethal with double one cost attack reacts plus overpower without reprise. That's how to do it. All right. I think that's roughly where we're going to end tonight. Um, All right, guys, if you guys have any uh, questions, you guys can ask me now. So what did we do today? We finished up the matchup charts for all the Warriors. We took a look at my Olympia RTN list. We overthought about how to build Dorinthia. And uh, then we... Plays in Dory games. A lot of people overblock by just a couple, yeah. And Biting Blade gets them. Biting Blade gets them if they're if they're like, oh okay. I'll block it. I don't have a D react. This turn is threatening. I'll block it plus three. This punishes them. Or they're like, okay, this turn is threatening, but I have a D-React, so I'll block even. Singing Steel Blade into this messes them up. Why do you think Kasai has a good win rate on Talishar, Josh? Uh, there is a burden. How do I put it? There's a burden of play, superior play, for certain heroes. When you play against Guardians, Dromai, Kasai, you have to really know what you're doing. You can't just play five-card hand into five-card hand into five-card hand and then hope you get there. Kasai also has a lot of flavor of the month strong matchups. She's good against the Brutes. Um, right now, the thing is that I'm seeing right now is like, there's very few heroes that are actually good into uh, Jomai. Bravo, Dash, Dory, Katsu, 
basically if if you're not a S or A tier deck, you have like very little chance against Jeremiah, it looks like. Let's look at the February data, not the March data. Right. Unfavored into Bravo. Unfavored into Fi. No shit. Unfavored into Katsu. Sure. Unfavored into the Brutes because they pop everything. Unfavored into Victor. And Bravo, I presume. Yep. So basically, if you're... If you have giant poppers or the ability to clear things or in Dorian dashes. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys can't even see what I'm pointing at. Sorry. So this is Dromai's win rate for February. Basically the only matchup she has issues into is if you have poppers like Bravo and Victor kadachis or the ability to clear dr baby dragons easily fine katsu or the ability to pop everything like a brute or dash and dory just have dash has enough value dory has enough has a unique strength <laughs> so that's the only decks that are really beating jeremiah and you guys asked about Kasai. Like Kasai is just good into brutes. It's, it's good into everything other than Kano and Dromai and Riptide. Yeah. I like Route, but it can get awkward into Victor. Red overpower is just raw power. Exactly. If you don't have a hand with Go again, what do you do with your turn cycle? You block, generally. Uh, if you have an attack reaction plus a blue, you can go for that. Because then you're going to get some damage in and then grains. Okay, guys. Um, any more questions? If not, we will be ending the stream very shortly. Um, for those of you who are going to Pro Tour 4, if you come up and say hi to me, I will have a small gift for you guys. Okay. Or if you have a buddy that is going... You can have your buddy say hi to me. That'll also work. So, yeah. Had a 20 person RTN with a bunch of Jeremiah. I wish I was on Dory. Yep. Dory can uh, do decently into Jeremiah. Not going to say it's favored, but you got a chance. All right, guys. I think this is where we're going to basically be ending. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you guys later. Take care.